it's Sunday the 11th of June 2023. We're going to start off this weekend's video we're going through the major indexes as per what we did on the, the midweek video to follow up on that. It's a good place to start. Obviously lots to get through this weekend, some market breadth later in the video, watch list posts, stocks, etc. And the IBD industry group bell curve and relative strength rankings tables, etc. So lots and lots to get through as well as the some of the week's stage two movers, uh, the weekly charts, we'll get, we'll get to that later in the video. But as I said, start off going through some of these weekly index charts and daily charts. So S&P 500, as usual, as the starting point. Um, at the bottom here, we've got the combined percentage of stocks above their 50-day, 150-day and 200-day moving averages. So this is um, a really good proxy for what you've those of you that watched um, Stan Weinstein's interview yesterday doesn't do too many these days but did did one for the, the trade line conference yesterday we talked about the, the stages survey from the book which has been his proprietary indicator throughout the years which obviously looks at the, the amount of stocks in stages one and two so ie those that are technically healthy so the combined percentage of stocks above their 50 day 150 day and 200 day moving averages is a very similar um indicator to that it gives gives very very close readings to what what that gives so you can see at the moment we're, we're hovering around the, the 52 percent level at the moment down here as stan said his um stages survey was around the around the 50 percent level or so at the moment so over time this this has developed from used to use just the 150 day or the 30 week moving average for it but worked out that the adding the the 200 day and the 50 day to it was a was a much better way to to look at that data so as you can see at the moment we're just still in this neutral environment as such even though the the major indexes like the S&P 500 here have been have been breaking out into stage 2 so it's a very selective market at the moment which again Stan talked about yesterday and something we've been been talking about throughout the year here with only a smaller amount of groups in stage two compared to the rest of the market that's been basing stage one and, and still some in stage four etc so it's a very very mixed market but S&P 500 continues to grind its way higher here in stage two but we are coming up to a, a major area of of support resistance from from prior levels here so potentially could could be stalling here a little bit and as if we look at the the daily chart we've got a little bit extended in the near term did a little breakout on Friday for above the four day range here but Obviously, couldn't close above its 280R level there. So could, might need to come back in a little bit, watch for tennis ball action. But we're above that old major resistance level. We started to break out com more convincingly into stage two here. You can see percentage of stocks above there. The 20-day EMA at 70.34% at the moment. So just rolling over a little bit here in the upper zone. When we're in, tend to be in a stage two environment, we tend to hold above that 70% that level on the, the percentage of stocks above their 20 day but obviously with a few little drops back below that generally it tends to, to hold in the upper range when it's trending in stage two but if we look at the the equal weighted chart as well which has got the longer percentage of stocks above their 200 day moving average here you can see that's currently at 57.4 percent in the s p 500 and you can see from the equal weighted chart here did break out this week as we saw that rotation with the the Russell 2000, the MYC stocks, and we'll see the, the equal weighted S&P 500 stocks here showing some relative strength in the near term, starting to break out. You see we've got above this, this 180R level in here, holding above that for four days. So you know what we call our short term uptrend on this, although we're still within this, this base structure at the moment. So needs still a bit more work to do on this one. We're still within the broader stage one structure on the equal weighted chart here, as you can see. Put the box across that. You can see we're clearly in a in a stage one structure on the equal weighted basis, but on the go back to the weekly chart on the ab weighted basis, obviously breaking out into stage two for multiple weeks now. So <laughs> Equal weight, given a, a different picture still at the moment, and obviously highlighting that what we're seeing in the, the percentage of stocks above the various moving averages being in in a more neutral position. So again, highlighting that selective nature of the market at the moment. Look at the Nasdaq 100 continues to be strong in stage two. It's been 
consolidating for a few weeks now, obviously massively outperforming the S&P 500 since breaking above its zero line in late February, early March time there. So continues in a strong stage two, again, moving into a, a zone of potential resistance as well from, from older levels, but obviously doing doing well so far in the leading index year to date, but has got extended in the near term here. If we look at the of getting above that free ATR level for multiple days there. So it's been running very strong in the near term. Had this um, pullback bar the other day, shook out quite heavily in a lot of stocks. So at the moment, that's the that's the area to watch. Did rebound back up to there on Friday, but we're not cleared back above that yet. So if we do start to move back above, then obviously continuation of the trend. But at the moment, obviously in a short-term consolidation. So looking for further pullback, ideally, as it has got a little bit extended in the short term here, 68.69% above their 20-day moving average. So again, hovering around that 70% level at the moment. So look at the equal weighted on this again. This has also started to move out into stage two here. You can see starting to break above the near-term range here that had been in February to May. So starting to clear above that a little bit, running running above the 180R level here. So within its normal range, not extended on the equal weighted basis, but obviously starting to consolidate a little bit near the highs here at the moment. 74% of stocks above their 200-day moving average in the NASDAQ 100 at the moment. So you can see it's been, as it's moved out into the potential stage two here, it's been cons majority of the stocks, more than two thirds have generally been above their 200 day moving average is what we typically see. So NASDAQ composite as well, breaking out into stage two, four or five weeks ago now. So, but the percentage of stocks above their 200 day moving average is only at 39.78%. So lagging compared to the MYSC, which if we flick through to the MYSC here, you can see it's up 57.17%. So reason for this is, that the, the NASDAQ did come off quite significantly. The, the software stocks, et cetera, had much more significant stage four declines and started to, a lot of them, even though the NASDAQ itself was running up in stage two still in 2021, a lot of the, the NASDAQ stocks and started to roll over in early part of 2021, back in March to April and started breaking down July, August time when this was still running higher, obviously led by the mega caps etc but they were they were already rolling over stage three and stage four and came some of them came off a long way compared to a lot of the myc stocks which didn't come off as far so they didn't have such a deep stage four decline and have now been consolidating they did start to lead out initially but have been consolidating in this this stage one structure for a while now so but you can see there is more than slightly more than half above their 200 day moving average in the MYSC and the NASDAQ has been playing catch up. So we've had some some bigger moves after obviously a bigger decline. So look at the, the Russell 2000. So this was the, the the chart of the the index of the week as such. People were lots of people talking about it. At the end of last week it was highlighted with the, the big move on the on the Friday at the end of the week which sent it out of that near term structure followed through this week strongly at the start of the week for a couple of days and then rolled over a little bit and started to consolidate nearer the, the end of the week in this zone of resistance which has been the major level throughout the last year and a half now so this is clearly our stage two level obviously not not breaking out down here is we're not into stage two yet we're still in the stage one structure so we're clearly within the base structure still so we need to clear this i've been saying this 190 level roughly it's not an exact level but once we start to to get some blue skies above this area here we'll still have some near-term levels of resistance to deal with but that for me would be the, the move to stage two with the russell 2000 you can see this significant bar here on the weekly chart which has been the, the major area of near-term resistance since the that was the when the bank stocks started to, to break down when the the regional bank crisis began so that's our zone of resistance so until we break back above that we can't be in stage two in my opinion so even if we do start to make some higher highs within this area here so that is the that is the level just around that 190 level ish so if we start to break above there then potentially we'll be moving into stage two look at on a daily chart you can see doing doing what it's supposed to do short-term consolidation on lower volume after a strong volume move 
So rising volume on the, the thrust up, pulling back on consolidating volume. So now looking for this to, to push out, potentially make a make a stage two breakout maybe in the coming week or so. And for the, the relative strength to start outperforming at the same time. So we want to start seeing that relative strength get back above the Mansfield zero line, which is the, the 52 week moving average of the stock or the index divided by the S&P 500. So 252 days is used on a daily chart for that. So to give up an approximate, you can use a, a smaller measure on the daily chart. You can obviously look at the relative strength using a, a 50 day moving average as well for a, a much quicker moving average. You don't have to use the weekly measure on the daily chart, but I find it useful to look at both. So, but when just obviously comparing the two, this gives a, a quick way of, of seeing where the weekly levels are as well. Although it's slightly, it's got slight differences, obviously based on the, the number of days only being a, an approximate.